It's the Emma Blackwell Show, searching the web for the most creative, intriguing, and captivating people in the world. Welcome once again to the Emmett Blackwell Show. Before we begin, I would like to thank you all for listening. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. This episode is brought to you by BookBannersEtc.com and Willow Kessel Jewelry. If you enjoy the show and would like to become a sponsor, you can by contacting me directly at emmett.blackwell at gmail.com. On this episode, I have debut author T.R. Tells to talk about her book, a game of survival. She is an amazing individual who has put a lot of thought into her first novel and is planning on turning it into a series. Since she was a little girl, she has had a passion for storytelling, and after publishing her first book, her passion has now become reality. She has a humble nature and a mind that goes a mile a minute. We are very happy to have T.R. Tells on the show. So, without any further ado, let's begin. A Game of Survival is the first book of a series of sin, destruction, and negativity. In the fractured realm, evil and discrimination plague the land and sin harbors and festers into the hearts of the mundanes. The darkness returns when the king of Midlegard is told of a vision that will end him and his reign. In King Godfrey's state of fear, he rids the city of all magi to protect his kingdom. One of the last surviving magi, Thea, must survive in a world where right and wrong don't exist and magic is not understood, but feared. Where countless visions of a grim future speak of death and destruction. Demons that inhabit not only the mind, but the body as well. Here is a tale of assassins, princes, and warriors who must survive in all matters of grim chaos. An assassin trained in the arts of shadow and killing to protect the weak, a warrior on a quest to save someone once lost and a quelling burden that has weighed on him for centuries. A prince determined to make peace that had been shattered so long ago. A woman determined to fight through the patriarchal society to find purpose, and a bastard prince who will uncover the secrets of his past. Their past will be relentless and harsh, just as the evil that festers through the hearts of men. All the while, a war of wars between the gods may very well spell the grim future for Migligard and the realm itself. Will the souls of the damned be free of their impurity and sins, or will they be ravaged by the evil that lingers inside of their hearts? In the game of survival, there are no winners, only survivors. And I'm here with the author, T.R. Tells, and hello, T.R., how are you? I'm doing pretty good, and how are you? I'm doing really good. I'm really excited to talk to you. I'm really excited to have you here on the show. So when did you discover that you had a talent for writing? You know what I mean? The question always sticks out like a sore thumb to me. I wouldn't knock myself down and say that I don't have any skills. Anyone who works at something long and hard enough can learn a skill. But the question of discovery is kind of a myth to me. I've always liked to read and write since I was in elementary school. Um, I had one of the highest grades in my school because I read. They even have plaque by the library with my name on it, which, by the way, I should see if it's still there or not. <laughs> But, yeah, my family, mom, brother, sister, all have a talent for singing music and me. I like to be in the library for hours. I mean, just recently, you know, my mom was just saying, and like, let's have enough time to look around the library and everything because you know how that you are. And she gave me a look. And I'm just like, I'm not going to take that long. But, you know, I have an impulse to buy books, 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 and buy 30 notebooks at a time and everything. Because, you know, I think the discovery is just the fact that it has been inside me for so long for so long as I can remember, because it isn't a discovery. It's me. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. It really is. And, and you reflect that so well in your story, a game of survival. It's a fantasy novel. Uh, and this is the first book of the series. And because it's such a massive world that you've already created, have you decided to, to write more books in this series? So, um, in reality, a uh, game of survival was going to originally be, a duology. My thoughts were saying to myself that, um, you know, most people probably just want a regular, you know, sometimes short series and stuff like that and everything. And, um, you know, it was just going to be a two-part fantasy world. 
But of course, when in Rome and my brain started formulating and creating different events and key elements started to change as, you know, I was working on the book and there were characters that were supposed to die. I won't tell <laughs> what and who and characters who weren't supposed to play a major role and so on and so forth. But, you know, of course, the brain has a mind of its own and occasionally likes to take the reins and say, hey, it's time for me to take over a bit. I mean, yeah. if I don't listen, I'm pretty sure things would have happened anyway. So, as of right now, if all things come to fruition, it is going to be a four parts world series with possible novella. Oh, okay? yeah. That's actually yeah. a really good idea. <laughs> so, I mean, if anyone knows, I mean, you know, um, this character and everything, it will be about Clodovicus. Pretty much sore wielding, you know, white haired character and everything. So, um, no people will find him. Well, some people do find him a little bit interesting and everything. Though, from the few people who have read and everything, and there will be other little bits and things throughout, you know, the game of survival that has been said that will actually be put, okay, into, um, you know, the novella. Like, mm-hmm. for instance, the Sons of Samuel, pretty much the cultist group that pretty much Fenris pretty much created. You know, the evil, well, I won't even say evil, really, more like misunderstood, and the gods pretty much just tossed him to the side just because of how he looked. Mm-hmm. Pretty much just discriminating him just for supposedly being a monster, and honestly, doesn't half the world do that anyway Mm -hmm. just discriminating and pointing fingers just because of how they look yeah or how they don't um, look you know i mean really you look at the way that people uh react to instagram and things like that it's like the media yeah exactly it's so ridiculous but i mean it really does deal with some real life events and now this book deals with the fear of a king who rids the world of the magi who he believes threatens his reign, which is kind of funny. You know, I mean, it's like even though they may not be a threat, he he decides he's going to get rid of them. Um, and so what helped inspire this story? What helped set up this world? Well, the first thought anyway was pretty much Hitler and mm. his despise and pretty much hatred for the Jews and everything. And um And pretty much just like thinking that, you know, they were essentially better and thinking that, oh, blonde hair, blue eyes was perfectness and everything, you know, and pretty much just killing them, throwing the concentration camps. Don't worry, it doesn't go into too much detail, okay, into the story like that. Um, But, um, and simply, other than that, fear itself. Mm, I won't say for everyone, but fear is in our DNA. We live and breathe in it every day. And it's not only a mechanism to protect us, but it can also hold us back. Fear can control us and either make us fight back or make us do hurtful things to people because we fear what we don't understand. And pretty much King Godfrey doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. And he fears only about losing materialistic things. And to protect that, he ends up threatening it because supposedly they might threaten him. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. I, even though, I mean, well, it's a good motivation for a, an antagonist. I really, it really is. So you have a mix of different characters in this book. Other than Thea, the main protagonist, who is a magi, what other characters do you have in this story? Well, there's quite a bit of characters, I should say, and they all serve sort a of purpose in Thea's growth and shows the views of humanity and society itself. So. For starters, even though she isn't a person per se, there is hell. The she-demon who inhabits Thea's body and in a way becomes a surrogate guardian and who as a child, being so young, Thea looks up to since her sister was taken. Hell is anything but nice, of course, but that is the only person Thea knows. Hell peels and shapes and makes darkness out of Thea, just like our own inner demons do to us every day. We might not see them physically, but they are always trying to tempt us and see if we fall into their demands. And of course, we all know King Godfrey, the ruler of Kingsland, and the one who literally only cares about what he wants. The next set of characters, also not human per se, are the voices in Thea's head that are minor cases of schizoaffective disorder. Because 
I do know there are many people out there who do have a medical condition that is very serious and there are people who don't take it seriously at all and they laugh, not see the case as serious. You know, even when people try to cry out and they just wave them off and then there's even cases of individuals just bullying them or even if they don't necessarily have like, you know, a sort of, you know, med- um, I guess medical condition, everything is just even still cyber bullying them, talking about their weight or their gender or their sex or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, I just wanted to kind of like, you know, show that, you know, that there are people like that and everything, but just because that there is darkness doesn't mean that there isn't a light at the end of the tunnel and that there are people who still listen and that's why for every dark character, there is good ones like Maggie. They is surrogate sister and best friend. And, you know, um, she is pretty much the most level headed person that I feel out of pretty much the whole entire book because even though that there are some like, you know, bass if I kind of like I guess in a way hinder her or whatever. She still has enough strength to kind of like push through. And yes, she is innocent in everything in this world and everything, but she pretty much pushes through that without letting pretty much the darkness pretty much swoop in and pretty much, you know, grab at her. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's pretty much a show that they are pretty much, you know, strong characters and everything. And then, and, you know, they're not just, you know, some women just aren't just all weak and contrived and they don't know how to fight or whatever, or pretty much just control, you know, um, whatever dark sort of like, you know, things is technically out there. Um, yeah. And, you know, and the funny thing about it, when it comes to like a, a female character and a lot of a lot of authors have done this and, and with with some regard, they do it for reasons, just like every one of your characters has a reason for being there. Um, when it comes to female characters, even though female characters, not all female characters go running in there like Xena warrior princess doesn't mean that they're not a strong character. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. There's uh, and of Green Gables talks about females in a very strong way. They're very strong. Same thing with Helen Keller. She didn't take the world on like a warrior, but she took it on internally like a warrior. You know what I'm saying? So it's right. it's mm-hmm. like there's different ways that you can tackle and, and battle your own battles. It doesn't mean that you have to go running in there like He-Man or, or Xena Warrior Princess in order to to take control of a situation and become a hero. So, yeah, I, I like the fact that you have that dynamic in the story because not only is um, Thea uh, very good at what she's doing, she also has the surrogate sister who also is 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 like a hero to Thea, you know, because they're, they're they, you know, bounce off of each other as far as depending on each other you know what i'm saying pretty much yeah Yeah. and so even like the smallest characters anybody who who's out there who's listening it doesn't matter how big or how buff your character is the battles that they face are what are going to define them you know what i'm saying so yeah so now um what we'll do is we'll be right back after a message from our sponsors we'll be talking a little bit more about your books and uh yeah we'll be right back after this message Have you ever found yourself looking for a gift but just can't find something that's unique and different? There are many online shops to find jewelry, but most of those sites carry manufactured creations that are mass-produced. The internet is at your fingertips. You shouldn't have to travel through all the realms to get something amazing. At Willow Kestrel Jewelry, you will find handcrafted creations. Whether you are looking for a wire-wrapped pendant, natural shells, or beautiful precious gemstones, you will find it all at Willow Kestrel Jewelry Shop at Etsy.com. Willow Kessel Jewelry uses genuine gemstones, including amethyst, moonstone, citrine, rose quartz, larimar, malachite, sapphire, and many more. You can make it rain with gemstones. I know I did. And it felt like I had been transported back in time to when me and my friend had to take a ring back to a mountainous volcano and toss it in to save the world. Now you can use the coupon code BLACKWELL20, that's Blackwell, with the number 20, to save 20% at checkout. Search Willow Kessel Jewelry under Shops at Etsy.com today. In a world full of obstacles and haphazard graphics, one company has broken the mold of building amazing book covers, banners, video trailers, and more. Book Banners Etc. is your premier source for the most epic designs. Constructed from the mind of independent author Lynn Lamb, Book Banners Etc. is dedicated to making your dream a reality. 
They offer an array of marketing materials at affordable prices. If you're looking for book covers that pop, banners that captivate, swag for signing, and alluring video trailers, stop by www.bookbannersetc.com. That's bookbannersetc.com. Imagine your world, then make it epic with www.bookbannersetc.com. All right, and we're back. Now, if it's one thing I can say about this book at first glance is that the cover is amazing. Did you have someone do this or did you do this yourself? Gosh, if I had the skills like this, that would be amazing. <laughs> but no, <laughs> I always look for and find really talented graphic designers, whether it be the ones on Facebook or those I know on the platform site called Wattpad. Mm. You know, which is, you know, where um, I pretty much started writing stories, you know, anyway. So I do give thanks to those on Wattpad and readers for like, you know, tuning in and reading all my stories and everything. But, um, yeah, I do make good friends with them. And, you know, I would anyway because, you know, I have, like, you know, great conversations anyway with people. But, um, honestly, the covers I give 100% thanks and love to the graphic designers who designed it. Cause, and, um, in fact, I'm getting a new cover made for both ebook and, wait for it, paperback. All uh, right. <laughs> Yeah, a game of survival. Once the cover has been finished and everything, we'll be back, and then you get to hold that glorious bad boy in your hand. <laughs> and I hope that you like that cover as much as the last one because they will be consistent in style with the four part series. I actually went for a more symbolic approach. Oh, that's so cool. I will actually give a little teaser of it because you know I did kind of put a little sneak peek on Twitter and everything. It is of the Ouroboros, which, as many of y'all know, does actually be imprinted on Santa. So, you know, keep a little interest going on and in what that means for her and everything. So, yes, that is the big thing about that. And for the second book. I will not say and everything, but that also has a sort of rendition, sort of meaning, and what that could mean out for the rest of the book two. Wow, I, I like that. I really do. I, I like that whole consistency across books. And another thing too is that you mentioned Wattpad, and anybody who who is out there listening, check out Wattpad. It is an amazing social network of writers and readers. It's a great way if you're somebody who's getting just started to kind of get your story out there and see how people react to it. It's also, I've noticed too, that these are stories that, that people are just telling from their heart. Um, they have an enormous LGBTQ writing community in there as well. And I'll tell you one thing, if you really want to know about love, okay, if you really want to know um, the essence of the emotion, okay, look into some of these stories on Wattpad because it doesn't matter what who's writing it and what the story is about. The love still exists within these stories and it doesn't matter. It, it's really incredible. I'm, I was blown away by some of these stories on Wattpad and I'm, I sit there and scratch my head every day when I look at that and I go, why in the world aren't these sitting on shelves? You know, and, and only because the story is so good. It really is. So I, I congratulate hey. you for, for even working with Wattpad and I congratulate anybody out there who's listening, who's part of the Wattpad community. You guys are doing an excellent job. Um, just keep writing what your heart tells you. It really is amazing to me. Um, so now your book, okay, it seems to cross between a fantasy novel and a post-apocalyptic survival story. Uh, what was the aim of this whole story? You know what? It probably would have ended the same way, even if it was a du duology, pretty much. Uh, I pretty much got most of inspiration from Norse mythology and pretty much the end of days known as Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how pretty much the gods pretty much wanted to create, you know, like a new world and everything. But I'll again, mix it in with, you know, a little bit of um, Christian Judaism, um, uh, religion and everything, and how pretty much, you know, the end of the world and everything is to come and whatnot. But also put in my own sort of spin that pretty much... Well, what's the focus on right now? Mm -hmm. You know, pretty much, Fenris has pretty much been disrespected, mistreated, dis discriminated, and pretty much just slapped around by his father. And, you know, most of, you know, the um, 
gods and everything in the eyes of reach, which is the, of course the heavenly plane and everything. And he's been pretty much locked away down in um, the dark world, which is pretty much the, in a way held pretty much and chained and everything similar also to um, the actual, you know, God Fenrir, but um, he pretty much despises and hates his father and pretty much the fact that he gives so much love and everything to these flawed humanoid mundane is what they're called Mm -hmm. mundanes and everything that pretty much lie cheat steal kill fornicate all this other stuff and everything and yet he can just wipe away ferris's creation the cryptids the titans and everything and then just toss them aside, especially like how he did with Ferris's brother Gargan. So, you know, it, it's more about pretty much he is a misunderstood villain and everything. And it more has to do with just like telling people like, you know, hey, look, well, look what you're doing to these certain groups of people that are pretty much, you know, they literally bleed. OK, exactly like you. You know, why are you pretty much just disrespecting? And that's something one of my characters actually said to, you know, Godfrey and everything that you pretty much are just like, you know, we we bleed the same way. You know, you bleed red, they bleed red. Why are you pretty much just, just tossed to the side as if they're nothing? You know, and that pretty much speaks messages for anyone else. Just because someone is gay, lesbian, transgender, or whatever, you know, where it's just like, um, okay, and mm-hmm. they're still human. Yeah, yeah, and you know, one thing too that really gets me is the fact that you take these gods and they're the ones making the decisions for the people of this world. All right. And that's one thing. I mean, I talk to people from all around the world. Okay. And I can talk to just about anybody on just about any topic because of the fact that we have common ground. Everybody has common ground and it's the leaders that really seem to push people in one direction or another. And it really drives me crazy because ever since I was a little kid, that's never been what a leader does, you know? (laughs) So it's like, you can't do that and then expect your people to not fight amongst themselves. Exactly. Yeah, it really is crazy to me. It it just blows my mind. Um, But anyhow, back to your book. Now, (laughs) your main character, Thea, she faces some major obstacles that deal with racism. And not only, and this is the great part about fantasy, it's not only about her hair and her skin color, but about her eyes, her heritage, her gender, and her financial situation. And although this is a fantasy story, it seems to really bleed into reality with topics such as these flowing into the main character's life. I have always believed, and this is just something that anybody who's out there who's listening probably already understands, but... I've always believed in celebrating the differences that make us all unique. It's it's the greatest part about being human is recognizing somebody's differences and respecting it and, and being able to enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. I mean, their culture, everybody's culture is different. It's it's amazing to have such a melting pot of cultures, and you do the same thing in your book. Um, this also adds depth to your characters. Now, what helped inspire Thea, just the character alone? This might be one of the most, I guess, not difficult, but most like hard driving questions. Um, as the first star, to be frank, they didn't really have a name mm. or so much as a personality at the start. You know, um, she did have a strong, defined, you know, emotional character because a lot of my characters, like literally every single one of them. You know, they have a little bit of me in them, you know. Mm-hmm. And even, quote, you know, the villain, you know, Sanders and everything, we share the same views and how the world can be a messed up place that discriminates and bullies individuals for the littlest thing. And it only gets worse as we have technology, though it can be a good thing, so don't get me wrong. But, you know, now people can hide behind masses and torment people. And I get really emotional when it comes to these kind of issues because it just annoys me how cruel the world can be. And she experiences, goes through, asks questions, is curious or desires certain things because 
I desire them and want them. Mm-hmm. Though Thea does sprout out, you know, on her own person, and she does things that I would never do, you know. <laughs> Um, yeah, blood, gore, knife, all the all the junk and everything. I'd probably be a wimp with that. <laughs> <laughs> but um it's because of the situation that she has went through, you know, that I might have experienced seeing or her in my life that, you know, she doesn't simply just wanna just cower or she's been forced into that predicament. And she's also inspired from Empress Theodore, which hence is also where the name came from. Mm. You know, take out some words here and there and everything. I think it's called an anagram or something like that. Mm-hmm. But, um, and, you know, doesn't that automatically just say, you go, girl. Because, I mean, if you look up <laughs> Empress Theodora and just pretty much see everything that she's kind of went through, it kind of is just like, uh, yeah, this is kind of like a sort of, you know, historical, you know, feminist, you know, kind of woman everything, which people and historians actually quoted her as and everything. And you know, I, I wish there was more accounts on Theodore and Justinian. And, you know, for those who may or may not have finished, I will not tell you who Justinian actually represents, though I'm sure people have, you know, have an idea and everything. But I enjoyed and loved her story. And to explore what a strong female lead who is a feminist Mm -hmm. and to show the world that feminist isn't someone who is whiny or someone who wants to take advantage of society or media and we certainly aren't using things you know in our favor or whatever but we stand for the equality of women and men and all individuals that go through the travesties of patriarchal systems cyberbullying racism sexism body shaming and so much more Mm mm-hmm yeah, and you know, the funny thing that just gets me, I mean, just talking to you right now, is the fact that everybody, like what I said before, everybody's unique. And it, it almost makes me wonder if people out of jealousy and out of fear, just like the king that you were talking about, start to divide people because of the fact of the jealousy and the fear. I mean, there's so many people out there that have so many talents and so many skills and so many, it doesn't even matter if they're talented or skilled, they have unique personalities. Everybody does. And the coolest part about it is that we can celebrate those things opposed to, you know, opposing them. You know, I mean, it really drives me crazy when I see that in the world because it's like, you know what, you don't know what half of these people are going through until you put yourself in their shoes. And then when you finally do, when you finally realize their side of the story, it's a remarkable thing. That's why people need writers like you (laughs) who, who can take a a fantasy story. And it's almost, it's kind of funny because, because it's almost like you're putting it in their face without really putting it in their face and just saying, Hey, I try uh, not to. (laughs) It's like, this is, this is really what you need to be listening to. This is the moral of the story is that, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All these things don't matter. We are all together in this. And, And it really, it really projects what Thea is all about. And I really enjoy this character. I'm so glad that you've, like you said before, you've taken parts of yourself and thrown it into every character in this book, because I mean, you, you already seem to me like a very diverse person, somebody who, I mean, we've been talking for a while now, somebody who can talk about any topic and who enjoys other things. You know, I mean, it's, it's great because that right there shows me that these characters are well-developed and that these characters can show a piece of everybody else too. Cause I mean, just like you said, you put a little bit of yourself in each character. I can almost guarantee you when people read your book, they're going to see a little bit of themselves. And that is what I would consider that common ground that we all kind of have. And it's, it's like that more people just need to read. That's all I'm saying. Anybody who's out there, who's listening, read more, please. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) So now you enjoy Netflix binges like I do. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, um, I'm kind of binge watching Supernatural right now. Oh, so. yes. Yes. Supernatural. I haven't even Season started six. that. <laughs> I was a big Doctor Who fan for a really long time and I, I'm still oh. into it. I, I really, I kind of, I'm not sure about the new Doctor Who. I like the, the fact that they went to a woman. Um, but I haven't really, like most of the time, even like with the last Doctor, it took me like 12 episodes to even get into the new Doctor. It's just such a, a change. But anyhow, I like, I like the show. I, I've always love the show but anyhow um (laughs) more or less about doctor who here and more about anime um so now have you ever thought of your book becoming an anime series okay so i actually did think of it being in the style of an anime multiple times and one of the anime series that was a big inspiration from this is the anime called berserk Mm -hmm. so 
a bit about it without really just like you know uh, advertising or whatever. Pretty much, it's about Guts, who's known as the Black Swordsman, who was once a wandering mercenary taken in mercenary group, known as the Band of the Black Hawk, Band of the Black Hawk, and he fought alongside them before their mutilated leader Griffith sacrificed his followers to become one of the God Hand and continue his dream of ruling a kingdom of his own. Only Guts and his lover Casca, who lost her sanity and memory from the horse she saw in Dorn, escaped the eclipse ritual, though they were branded with marks that attract evil, restless spirits, and other similar entities, with Casca in the care of a blacksmith, um, and several other characters adopted daughter, and Rickard, the only member of the Hawks, absent during the eclipse, Guts sets out to hunt down the God Hand um, in a long and perilous journey. So, um, as you can tell, there is a lot of differences, okay, to the sto- to my story and that of Berserk, but there are many similarities. I mean, for I mean starters, they joins a group of children called the Forty Little Thieves, who are also based off on a real group, I believe, in New York. That's what it was. And two of the characters, Maggie and Eddie, are actually also based off of two real people as well, whom again. Maggie actually does become in, you know, the history and everything, she does actually become you know, the leader of you know, the 40 Little Thieves and everything. Mm-hmm. So, I won't actually say if all that is necessarily going to be true in a way. Of course, you have you can't be too accurate with real life events and everything, but you know, like I said, I mainly grab, like, you know, strong independent female characters and everything, and most of this is about the strong independentness of you know, women. And um, pretty much it might not be um, as dark as, as an anime, but, you know, it has its moments and I have been told from those who have read the book that I've been known to torture their souls with a number <laughs> of, of things that go on about it. Um, I was literally even having a conversation with someone and they literally said that they had a nightmare from a particular scene. And they were like, you know, to me, oh, you're probably going to say, oh, no, I gave her a nightmare and everything. But they were like, but you should be proud that you actually <laughs> made me have a nightmare. So I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I'm still sorry anyway. Yeah, well, <laughs> that makes a good writer. It really does. <laughs> <laughs> right, but, you know, I, again, yes, I would like to be an anime, but I would also be happy if it was on HBO or Netflix or whatever, and possibly maybe if Ruel's song, Game of Survival, which, you know, hint, is the inspiration mm. for the book's title, because, you know, a uh, you know, little side note and everything, it was actually going to be called Queen. Hmm. But, you know, given, you know, so a little fun little fact right there. So, but, you know, given, of course, the changes and everything, it had to be something else. There was going to be a lot more struggling, a lot more survival and everything, a lot more chaotic things happening. And Rel, which, by the way, she's just, you know, queen pop, just, she's getting very popular and everything. That one song, Game of Survival, and the lyrics that went along with it. So, yeah, one thing that I've noticed, too, about your stories and the fact that you take a, a female character, you take historical events to build her character up a little bit, and then you build on that even further. And, you know, you talk about the fact that this is like a hero, and I've mentioned it before. This is a hero for women. But, you know, in a lot of cases, it can be a hero for men, too. Um, I When I first read the book, uh, The Hunger Games, I, I felt a little bit of myself in Katniss. Um, she was a lot more athletic than I was. But in any case, <laughs> in any case, I could still see that she was struggling against an oppressive force that she couldn't control, but she could only control small aspects in order to get to her final goal. You know, And it's just like anybody who sees that, they can take a little bit of any character. It doesn't matter, male or female, and they can see a little bit of themselves in that character if they can't then then there's a problem then that means that they're not they're not connecting with a character in a book and that's yeah and then it's sad way like you know um separate man or woman whatever because even though it is about you know a female character though there are different other point of views as well Mm -hmm. and different characters who speak and everything it's not just solely for women because there are men who actually go through the same thing that does Mm -hmm. you know Abuse and everything. The fact that why are privileged men do why do they have to be buff or whatever? Why do they have to just be manly or whatever? Why can't men cry? 
<laughs> I mean, and that's pretty much just a, a thing like that. I even just showed with Eddie and everything, you know, and, and what he goes through. And just to show that, yes, you are allowed to cry. And yes, like you also go through certain things just as much as a woman can or has gone through. Well, see, so, and, that, you know. and that's the whole point of empathy. It really, it, it's like once people bridge that gap, once people realize that empathy is real and that people can feel what another person is feeling, then I think that the, the whole world will start to heal. You know, I mean, I really think it will because people need to realize that we're not so different than the opposite sex. And, and it's really kind of driving me crazy that they think that they have to be. You know, it's like, it's like you, we still, like you said, we all bleed the same blood. You know, we all fight the same battles. Sometimes some of us but fight stronger battles than others. You know, and it's hard. It really is. But anyhow, um, so now what do you have planned for your next book? As of right now, I am working on book two of The Game of Survival. And it is called twilight of the gods and you know and a part of that the series title as a whole is called final destiny now what that means to y'all is entirely up to you just like how pretty much the entirety of the story yes it is pretty much about people struggling and surviving and pretty much fighting their own inner demons and everything you can take different messages and everything from inside of it because i've even heard from different people different thoughts and how they take it and, you know, what it generally means to them. So, but I do plan for the next book to have more action, more adventure, more magic, more inner conflicts, and a lot more troubling things heading our character's way. So, you know, no getting out of this one, you know, survival is half the battle because I mean, the game survival. But, you know, don't worry, our characters, they've grown so much, so they are able to handle gods, demons, or magic that comes their way. I mean, just look at Sam and Dean from Supernatural. They've <laughs> pretty much just gone through heck and just came out just okay. Which, by the way, I would actually say, if you do, like, I guess, A Song of Ice and Fire... Supernatural in the anime Attack on Titan, then I'm pretty sure that you'll like this. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, that's that's great because now we kind of know what has inspired you to do all this. It's really cool. Um, <laughs> so now you've you've written this first book. Congratulations once again. It, it is Thank an you. amazing thing that what you've done, um, and to have so much in one book to just start out. Um, what advice would you give a new author who is just getting started? For new authors just getting started, write every day, read every day. I know that seems like it's repetitive and it's simple, but it does help. And it's not just for becoming an author. You know, just like how, you know, just me and you were just talking for just even a while and it wasn't even about like books and everything. You know, when you are generally feeling down, like your writing isn't good enough, just know that. There is someone out there in the new, the near future, okay, that wants that book that you're trying to create. But how can they read it if you don't make it? And another thing, always ask for help, mm. no matter what. If you don't know anything, ask someone who does. You'll never learn anything by shutting yourself out into the dark. Join book clubs, join Wattpad, and really, it doesn't even have to be about books. We as writers learn from experience in our interactions. So, for example, that four-legged dog that you saw across <laughs> the street, which I do hope that he's okay, <laughs> perhaps you'll get inspired and write about from the point of view of that animal. Or that person who was rude to you in the supermarket, they might be the next villain in your book. <laughs> Ideas, inspiration, experiences are freaking everywhere. You just have to get out of there, grasp, and take it by the reins. So, to paraphrase something Winston Churchill said, which I always pretty much just keep for myself and everything, never, never, never give up. Wow, that's that's incredible. And the fact that, I mean, you throw it out there is, I mean, honestly, there's so many people now in the grocery store that are going to be afraid of becoming villains in your next book. And, <laughs> and getting killed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, and getting killed up. Oh, my goodness. He's like, uh, okay, I won't, I won't stick up my middle finger at you, but you're going <laughs> to die in my book. Okay? Yeah, you're going to, yeah. You, you, eh, eh. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh boy. So now we've come to the part of the show and this is, uh, this has been an extremely amazing uh, experience talking with you. It's been wonderful. Um, but now I'm going to have to put you through some type of uh, trial by fire or some type of game show. So here we go. We're going to do a game called word association. Now here are the, here are the kind of general rules. Um, now each player will have to stump the other player. And to do this, you'll need to come up with as many words as possible without repeating any. Okay. Um, so for this word association, uh, we will be doing um, words associated with writing and books, which should be easier for both of us, I hope. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Um, but then if the word is like repeated or you're not able to associate it, like for example, if I say pencil and you say cereal bowl, th those aren't associated. So um, They could be. <laughs> yeah, I can just see you hunched over we a cereal bowl right the next book. And just be like, okay, well, here's this. I've done that. <laughs> Oh, okay, but anyhow, uh, so for each one that we get right, we get a point, and um, we just keep going. I'm going to quiz you first, and then you're going to quiz me. Ooh. Yeah, okay, and if you delay too long, then then you lose. All right? Whew. Okay, here we go. Okay, back in school again. Yeah, here we go. Are you ready? All right, I'm ready. All right, first word, book. Reading. Pencil. Stress. Paper. Uh, trees being burned down. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> trees being burned down. That's a good. Yeah, it's more of a phrase, but I'll take it. Okay. Um. Uh. Uh. Sentence. Uh, very good at long words. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I keep getting sentences. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. I hate. <laughs> okay. Well, anyhow, we'll go on, and you're, you're going to quiz me now. This is. <laughs> <laughs> trees being burned. This is funny. I'm not doing it right, but I'm having fun. <laughs> That's the best part about it. Okay, go ahead with yours. Okay, title. Chapter. Mm, chapter. Oh, you can't say chapter. Oh, I can't. Okay, nope. my bad. I, okay, I screwed up. Paragraph. Um, book. Mm, characters. Antagonist. Protagonist. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. All right. Well, um, because uh, you were able to get a lot more words in than I was, um, <laughs> you win the game. And get this, you're going to get 12 billion points. Now, these points can't be used for anything, and they don't exchange for money. But you can say that you just won 12 billion points on the Emmett Blackwell Show. And I've never won anything. So you know what? I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> all right here so i think that's a good enough prize <laughs> yes it is it is thank you very much for being here on the show where can people find your books and your writing they can go find it on amazon.com type in my book name and i also have a website where you can also find the book you can also find blog pages and everything else that pretty much comes with it and there also might be little sneak peek and everything of two once I pretty much get a lot more things out there. I am also thinking about putting little short stories, you know, that involve pretty much the gods. Hmm. But, um, yeah, so that wasn't actually an idea because I know, you know, other, all, I get certain inspirations from different authors and everything of what they do and sometimes they put small little short stories online that people can actually read so i thought wait i mean why not put play music of god to see pretty much from their perspectives so you can go find it at game of survival series .com. awesome and i want to thank you again for being here on the show folks if you're out there and you're listening check out uh, a game of survival it's an amazing story um tr tells has put so much into this book that it, you will get submerged into this world so definitely if you need an escape and you don't got a lot of money and you want to jump on a vacation trip to somewhere new <laughs> definitely <t> check <laughs> this book out because it is amazing and uh, tr thank you so much for being here on the show it was fun it was fun, and I enjoyed my time here. Thank yeah, you. I might come back for number two, yeah, so you, stay tuned, You, you guys. better let me know when you get that second <laughs> book going. I will, I will. <laughs> All right, and this is Emmett Blackwell signing out. Keep on reading and keep on writing, my friends. Bye, guys. It's the Emmett Blackwell Show, searching the web for the most creative, intriguing, and captivating people in the world. <laughs>